Hello everybody, Usha Pandit, your Mind Springs English teacher. Today, I am going to tell you a story. Okay, I thought of doing verbs with you. And then I said, verbs is such a heavy topic. The highest and the most weighty part of speech in English is the verbs. And it can get terribly boring, terribly heavy. So I thought, let me make a story for you. A nice story and it's called the verbs go job hunting. Okay, so we're going to have a job hunting scene. And this was a job that was advertised in the sentence factory. And it was the highest paying job in the entire parts of speech community. So everyone was absolutely envious of verbs and said, my God, they're being paid so much. And why are they being paid so much? They're being paid so much because they are the most important words in a sentence. In fact, you cannot have a sentence without a verb. Okay. So even if you have just one word in the sentence, that word has to be a verb. Look at that, how important they are. So naturally, they will get paid the highest, won't they? Because they are indispensable. See, another word that I'm going to give you today, vocabulary, indispensable. Indispensable means you cannot do without them. So therefore, that's what they are. So there it is, a word go, a small word like go, it can be a sentence. If I say go, that's a sentence. What does, I, what does it mean? It means you go. The you there is implied, which means that when you have a verb, you need to have a subject. If you have an action, you need somebody to do the action, right? You can't just have an action floating in the air. And therefore, a subject always needs to be there in order to do the action. That's why we have a subject and a verb going together. But you don't really, if you just say go, I can't say you as a sentence. See, I can't say you and stop, but I can say go and stop. And you therefore is the subject. So we have a subject verb object, which is your most basic sentence. For example, if I say the girl took a cake, right? The girl took a cake. The girl there is the subject. And the verb and everything after it is called the predicate. Lots of people get confused over subject and predicate. What's a subject? What's a predicate? There's no need for confusion. You take the verb in the sentence and everything that follows the verb. The verb plus everything that follows it is the predicate. Before that, what you've got is the subject. You're talking about the girl. And she took a cake, that whole thing exists, that predicate exists in order to tell you something more about the subject. So therefore, predicate, so that's your object. The cake is your object. Now that cake can be expanded. I can make it into a big phrase. Why should I stop at cake? If I say the cake with a cherry on top of the cream, that's a long thing, but all that is the predicate. Whatever I say after that verb is going to be the predicate telling me more about the girl who is the subject. So this is your subject and predicate. Okay, excellent. Now instead of the girl, I can say Radha took a cake. So I can have a proper noun. I can say she took a cake. So I can have a pronoun and I can have it. Now I can't say it took a cake. Then it would be like a dog or something taking the cake. But if I say it was cold, then it there becomes the subject. It is called the impersonal, impersonal pronoun. That means it is not attached to any person or any, any living thing. It's just or, it, or even to an inanimate thing. It's like saying it. That means it can stand for the morning. It can stand for the season. It can stand for anything. Impersonal pronoun here. So this is your 
basic subject and predicate okay so the verbs all the verbs that come the judges decided they will have they will be able to create subjects and predicates so this was one of the features of a verb now let us see who got the job i am very curious to know who got this jobs who were the people who came in when it's high paying everybody will come in the nouns will come in the adjectives will come in so the judges decided that we need to have a job description okay and before that we need to have qualifications for these verbs let us check out if they are really verbs or if they are imposters if they are pretending to be verbs just to get the job so they decided let's look at qualifications what is a verb exactly so before that they said let's look at two types there of very small and very very important some of them will come alone okay there'll just be one word and call itself a verb but these are not too many huh? there will only be three with single words as the verb which is first person singular i go third person singular he goes and past tense i went these are the only three forms of the verbs that will have one single word every other form or tense of the verb will be more than one word so this is something to remember and they are called compound words like has been going will have been going should have been going may be going always more than one word so that's one thing so they said let's see what qualifications we should have and they decided to call this bundle of qualifications they decided to call it finite verbs why finite finite because there is, they said there are certain restrictions there are certain disciplines if you are a verb you can't do anything at all you have to be within certain boundaries that's a verb a verb is like a soldier so they said let's see what those finite requirements are how do we bind verbs how do we keep them disciplined so they said they must have an infinitive form we should be able to say two plus that verb to sing to dance to jump to be to do to have all these are infinitives infinitive means it's a basic form of a verb that you need you should be able to put two so if an adjective sneaked into the interviewing room let us say the adjective is beautiful like beautiful girl can we say too beautiful no so you will get caught immediately so infinitive was an excellent way the second way they said would be to find out if they have a subject verb agreement what is the subject verb agreement that is your subject i and this is your verb sing so i'll say i sing but the minute i put he or she it will become he or she sing so this extra s that we've got there that is the trick to catch them if they come in disguise we'll catch them because the minute you say i sing and she sings or he sings they are caught if it continues with sing 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 then they cannot be finite verbs so this was the second one the third thing they said one more test that we should give them is they should we should be able to write them in the past tense the best way to catch them is with the tenses let's catch them and see if they can make a past tense so the past tense is would be like he ran or he moved something like that what about a present participle because that is also used in tenses isn't it if i say uh, he was running she was moving we need that ing bit so therefore running and moving are the present participles you must also have these two the present participle form should be there excellent then they said we should have the past participle what about if we use have we can't say have running had running we need have run had run okay that's a past participle in a regular verb the same thing you will get past tense and the past participle will be absolutely the same so i can say i moved my table or i can say i had moved my table in the past so the moved will remain the same so that was great 
So, they said these are finite verbs and we know exactly if somebody comes in who is not this, we are not going to give them the job. Awesome. So, then they said before going into the non-finites, they said let us keep this in mind to test all these guys out and let us find out what the job description is. Let us look at job descriptions, let us look at all the departments where we need to place these verbs and find out who are we getting, who are the candidates we are getting and can we fit them into the right departments. So, they called the candidates in one by one. The verbs came in, the first set of verbs many of them came in. In fact, the interviewers got exhausted, so many of them and they said we are the action words and what is important about them? These guys are dynamic. What does dynamic mean? Dynamic means someone who moves around, not stagnant, not sitting in one place. We are dynamic, we move. So, what are these verbs? These verbs are verbs like for example, you have to dance, jump, um, uh, sing, eat, drink, all everything is action, action oriented. So, you can actually start acting it out. Okay? So, they said we are dynamic verbs, we are action verbs and we are awesome. Okay, excellent. So, they said go and sit in that room and we will take a look at you. But before we take a look at you, let us check out the qualifications. Can you say to jump to sing? Yes. Do you have a subject verb agreement? Yes. I dance, you da he dances and we also have past present. We have danced and dancing and had danced and things like that. Excellent. They qualify, put them in a room and then we are going to take all these guys because they are action verbs. Awesome. Then there were another group ke who came in and said, we are not action verbs. We are, we state things. Okay. And sometimes we show status. So, we are really, you know, we are rich and we are, we are also, we are intelligent. And we have status, two things. We are not rich, we have, we have got status, uh, but we have, we are intelligent. And how do you know them? Okay, so you have verbs of being and possession. Being means I say I am a teacher, he is a carpenter. If you have all these kind of am, is, were, they were tired. So, they are stating, a, they are making a statement about how they were feeling or how they were, uh, what kind of professions they were in. Or if I say he has a diamond ring, then I am again stating something. Now, has cannot get up and dance and jump and sing and eat like the action verbs. But they are important, we said we are very important. And more than that, we are also thinkers. So, the stative verbs, these guys called statives. Right? There are two kinds, one is of being and having and the other is of thinking. So, if I say I know, I think, I believe, I understand, I um, uh, measure, I feel, I can sense, I see, I hear, um, I can measure, I can weigh something. They are all so important. We are the intelligentsia of the verb family. We are statives. They said that. Okay, let us put you to test to be. I can say to be, to have, I can say to know, to think, I can say uh, knowing, thinking, measuring, feeling, I can say uh, I have a past, I felt, I understood. Awesome, they have passed the test, go and sit in another room, the thinking room. So, that was done. The third, the other set that came in was the causers. He, they said, we do not do work like the others. I mean, how dumb is that? Working all the time. We are so smart. We cause other people to work. And who are we? We are verbs like let, allow, make, get. I got him to make a cupboard for me. Did I do the job? No, I got him. He sat and worked for me. If I say you are required to fill the form, who is filling the form? You. I am not doing anything, I am making you do it. So, make, do, require, permit, I permit you to go out of the class. Who is going to walk out? You. So, see how smart we are. We cause people to do things. 
So, we are causatives, ok. So, that is a group. So, can we say to require, we can say he requires, I require, he requires and we can also say required, requiring, had required, good, excellent, you all fit in, go and sit in the department for causing people to work. That means these guys are great managers, they will make other people work, very happy. And then there was another group that came in and said, but we show moods and intentions, you can't do any intentions without us, see. And what are the intentions and what are the moods and modes? We show ability, I can sing, we show permission, you may go, we show possibility, it might rain, we show determination, I will go and become a soldier. It can show uh, a whole bunch of intentions, you should go and see your grandmother, I can even do obligation, you know. I or I can be very polite and say, could you please give me, I am versatile, the modal, I am the modal. Awesome, okay, so let us put you to test. Now, when they put them to test guys, the modals failed every test. So, they said, I cannot say two should, I cannot say two may, neither can I say may, I may. And can we say she mays? No. I can't say made, musted, musting, shoulding, had shoulded. So they said, let us just put them in a room and let us check them out later because they are saying they are verbs, but they do not pass any of those tests. So the models were determined that they are verbs. So, they said we will prove to you that we are verbs, but we will sit out for the time being because we are not fitting this. Then they came the helpers, the auxiliaries, they said nobody can work without us. What do you think? You think these action verbs can do anything? No way, they need us. We are the ones who make tenses for them, we are the ones who make your past, present, future. We are the ones who make your perfect tenses, nothing you can do without us, helpers, the auxiliaries, the tense makers and what are they? They are these verbs to be, to do and to have. These are what we call the primary verbs, okay. And these are the verbs that you use. So, when you use is, are, was, were, all these are to be verbs has, had, have, to have, do, does, did, to do and this is what you use when you make your tenses. All your tenses are made with these three primary verbs as auxiliaries, as helping verbs. So, the helpers were put in another department and said, okay, your job is to help everyone. You guys are the oil in the machinery, very, very important for us, please welcome. And they passed all these tests. So, they said yes, we you can say being, having, you can say had been, uh, you can say I have, but if you say she, I am sorry, it has to become she has, there is a subject verb agreement and we all have infinitives to be, to have and to do. Passed, very well done, go and sit in your department. So, they were given jobs. Then came the artists. So, the artist said, what a boring world you live in. Are you always going to jump and sing and dance? How boring is that? Look at us, we are the artists, we are the fashion designers. With us you get colour, with us you get, we merge things and we make it so beautiful your world. Otherwise, there is no colour in your life. So, who are we? We are the metaphoric and the idiomatic verbs. So, they said metaphoric, idiomatic, what is that? Wait a minute, I will give you an example of who I am. And the metaphoric verb said, she breezed into the room, not she went into the room, she walked into the room, boring, she breezed in, see what I have done, I have taken the breeze and I have appropriated its quality, she breezed into the room. If I say she galloped into the room, she will become a horse. 
If I say she crawled into the room, she'll become a worm. See how smart I am. How can you do without me? I'm awesome. You cannot do without us metaphoric verbs. We are amazing. We are what create, we create literature. Otherwise, you're boring. So they said, okay, can we say to breeze? Can we say breezing in? So they passed the test. Excellent. Go and sit in the artist room, the fashion designer room. And then came the idiomatic verbs. They said, what about us? We are idioms. Idioms means they don't make up the sum of parts. They are bigger than the sum of the parts. Wow, that's like scientific language. Bigger than the sum of the parts because if you say it's raining cats and dogs, does it mean that cats and dogs are falling out of the heavens? No, what does it mean? It means it is raining very, very heavily. And so, if I say it was raining cats and dogs, I'm actually using a past continuous tense. I can do all the tenses. I can say to rain cats and dogs. I can't, well, I can't say I was raining cats and dogs and he was raining. We can't do that. He rains, I rain. You can't do that because I'm an idiom. So, obviously, I don't fit the your normal rules. Okay. All right. I guess you passed at least you got two out of three. So, we will put you in the fashion room. So, they were all sent to this artist room because they are the guys who, you know, make things beautiful. The bold and beautiful people, the Bollywood of verbs. Okay. So, you finished that. And then came the rich verbs. They said, we have got slaves. We have got servants all the time. We don't come alone. Always there is somebody waiting on us. And who are they? They are either prepositions or adverbs all the time behind us. So, what are, what are you? Your words like he ran up a big bill or the project did not take off. See, after the take there is an off. If I say I was taken in by the man's charming looks, then taken in means he took advantage of me. I was taken in. I got completely charmed and then he took away all my money. So, taken in will change, taken off will change. I took on a lot of work and now I am tired, it will change. So, the minute I change my servant, my colors start changing and I become very, very interesting. So, I am a phrasal verb. Now, the departments were full and there were still people waiting outside. So, they said, Are, what are we going to do with all these people? You have to do something. Let us check them out. So, there was the models who did not pass anything, but they were able to prove. They said, see, if I have a sentence like uh, you should go or uh, I should, suppose you say, and then they, you know, Obama was giving a speech and he kept saying, I can, you can, things like that. So, then you can, where is the verb? Can. What is can? Can is a model. It is me, model, showing ability. See? I will. If I just say I will, it is a proper sentence. Yeah, it is a proper sentence. What is will? Will there is a model showing determination. So, they said, okay, we can't do without these guys. We take models out, no? many things will go away from the language. So, they decided to keep them, but they said, I am sorry, we cannot call you finites. You do not fit any of these definitions of finite. So, they said, okay, you call us not finite. We refuse to be called infinites because there was another group of people standing there who were rejected. They were the infinite verbs. Who were these infinite verbs? They were the gerunds, the participles and the infinitives. These two guys were ending in ing and pretending to be verbs. They are saying we are verbs, we are verbs. But they did not have a helper. They were not making a tense. So, therefore, they were rejected. Now, if you want to know more about gerunds, participles and infinitives, I have done a video. Okay, Go and look at it. It is excellent. So, and this one is to plus the verb. Any verb. If you say to do, to sing, to dance, that is not a verb. That is an, called an infinitive. So, these guys were the rejects and they started crying. But they said, sorry guys, bad luck. You have to go. So, they got rejected straight away. That is why model said, don't call us infinites. We don't want to be rejected. Call us not finite. 
because we do not fit this rule. So, there is a bit of complication with the verbs, that is what makes them so interesting, right. And then finally, the verbs themselves started saying, you know, there is a caste system. Caste system in verbs? How can that be? Some of us are higher than the others. Okay. How can you be higher than the others? So, we have USP. We have multitasking. Aribapre, multitasking verbs. So, what are these? So, they said, let us look at it. So, what they said was, some of us are flexible and we are called transitive verbs. To transit means to travel. That means you can transfer us to any desk and we will be able to do a good job. We are multitaskers and we are the transitives. So, the cat killed the rat. I can say the rat was killed. See the cat, I can take my subject and object and move it around. I am such a smart and such a versatile verb that I am. And I can do an active voice and a passive voice. So, when my object becomes a subject, I become a passive voice, otherwise I am the active voice. I have also done an active to passive video. Go and take a look at it. It is very, very well done and you will understand it brilliantly. So, these multitaskers were then, so they said, what about the others? What do you mean? The others are intransitive. They cannot transit. Nothing will pass. So, suppose if you say the bird flew in the sky, the bird is stuck in the, in that position and the sky is stuck in the, after the verb position. You cannot move them. Can I say the bird was, the sky was flown by the bird? I can't. It would be nonsense. And therefore, this becomes an inflexible verb. That means, if I put him in one desk and give him some job, I cannot move him from there. He is not fit for anything but that job. So, therefore, he is inflexible, he is intransitive. You cannot put, the, put us in the same place. We are multitaskers. The transitive verbs are the multitaskers. Intransitive verbs, the inflexible ones. Well, we cannot be put in the same place. Okay, all right. Do not sulk. We will put you in different rooms and we will give you different kinds of work to do. So, this is how the sentence factory manned all their departments and rejected the guys who were not verbs. It was very, very, very clever of them. So, who got the jobs? All of them got jobs and some of them got better jobs than others, but all of them got jobs. And your adjectives, nouns and all those guys who came in thinking they will make a quick buck, they were sent home. That is the verb story. Was not it amazing? I have done the entire verb family with you right here. The entire gamut of verbs that you can possibly have, I have taught you in this one lesson. So, do subscribe to my channel, press that bell so that you get notifications every time I do a video like this or a story like this for you. Make sure you buy our books, it is in the description box and if you, there are any comments to make, any requisitions that you need for grammar, please write it in the comments box and I will make sure that I do it at some stage for you. Thank you very much for watching. Do view this video several times, make notes, never think that I have done it once, I have seen it once, I have got it, you never get it like that, okay. So keep smiling, have fun, see you again.